Whether you're a single Pringle, ready to mingle, or peas in a pod and Facebook official, or you're celebrating your 50 year golden jubilee wedding anniversary, and finally ready to try and understand each other, or if you don't identify as any of these, then you need to read this book because we have been getting it wrong this whole time. Hey friends, peas and Pringles, Welcome to the channel where we explore ideas and strategies to help us get more out of life and stop wasting time trying to understand why girls get annoyed when we offer them excellent solutions and why guys cannot read a girl's mind ever. Or maybe they will after watching this video and many, many more because we get these insights from this excellent book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus by John Gray. We all want to feel special, but sometimes it's a relief to feel normal and that's what this book made me feel and it helped me understand myself a bit more. This particular book has given me so many revelations. I would highly recommend it if you want to level up your understanding of your partner or your future partner. You know what? Scratch that. I reckon this would be helpful for your interactions with your parents, with your grandparents, with your children, the whole lot. And our mate John published this 30 years ago in 1992, which means that it has stood the test of time and has some very good stuff in it and is probably more stable than your crypto portfolio. There have been many studies on relationships, but the most well-known one is probably the Harvard one, which spans almost 80 years. And what that study shows is that good relationships with various people in your life is the key to living longer and happier lives. So we all have skin in the game. All right, buckle up because we're talking about man caves, mind reading and avoiding crazy fights and more. These are the seven things we need to know about women and men. I feel like this might be a long one. There's a lot to talk about. So don't forget to use the timestamps below to jump to the areas that you need the most. And if you don't know, just start from the beginning. All right, let's get to the juicy stuff. The first thing to know is that guys and girls are different and we are supposed to be that way. Not just a little bit different, but vastly different and at times complete opposites. Hence the name of this book, Men are from Mars and women are from Venus, which is probably why Elon Musk is building his rockets so he can find a way back home. It's a simple premise and not surprising to most people, but it's profound to understand because this is the main idea that underlines everything throughout the whole book. I always ascribe to the whole, treat others how you would like to be treated, which is all fine and dandy, but when it comes to interacting between guys and girls, this is all wrong. Because we are all different and are supposed to be, our way of communicating and thinking are different as well. And this means treating others the way you would like to be treated might not be the best approach. Okay, so an important note here, I'm gonna talk about these ideas from my perspective. So as a guy, as a man, I'm gonna be talking about guys and girls, men and women, male and female, interchangeably. But it doesn't matter what you identify as because these are all generalizations to convey an idea. I know for a fact that for certain things, I fall into one camp and for other things, I fall into the other. So don't get too caught up whether a particular point is for men or for women. The important thing is knowing which traits you have and knowing which traits the person you're interacting with has so that you can understand each other better. So don't forget that as you watch this video and remember that you should not be treating others how you want to be treated, but how they want to be treated. This is the biggest idea in the book. So if you stop watching right now, you will have got the point. But you probably want to know how we're different and what we can do about it. So let's keep going, shall we? For the second thing, I need to set the scene. Let's say a guy is talking to a girl and let's just call them Chuck and Blair. So Blair is telling Chuck about the problem she has after her Zoom catch up with her friend Serena. So Chuck is listening closely and wipes his brow with relief as he realizes, ah, this is an easy problem. I know just what to do and proceeds to offer his solution to Blair. Blair becomes annoyed and angry and tells Chuck that he isn't listening to her. Chuck is quite confused by all this and smolders quietly. What the hell is going on? This one resonates with me big time. I have felt this on too many occasions. And to understand this conundrum, we have to understand something about guys and girls. Guys like to achieve things, solve problems, and provide solutions. And as a result, their self-worth is defined by their ability to do each of these things. If you're like me, you probably know this already. Okay, so far so good. But here's where things turn upside down because girls like to talk about feelings and interact with people through conversation, right? We gathered as much, which means a girl's self-worth is defined by her feelings and relationships. And therefore, going back to the example, when Blair is telling Chuck about her problems, she is trying to connect with him. She just wants to talk. But what does Chuck hear? He hears problem and instantly starts searching for a solution and offers that to Blair. And so Blair gets annoyed because she's thinking, why isn't Chuck listening to me and my problem and commiserating with me? By the way, this is what girls mean when they say a guy is not listening. Meanwhile, Chuck's thinking, I just offered her an excellent solution. Even I'm surprised at how good of a solution I had up my sleeve. Why does she not appreciate this? Little does Chuck know, 
Blair was not looking for a solution. She did not care at all. All she wanted to do was to talk about her feelings and that's it. Crazy, right? So as a guy, all you need to do when you're talking to a girl is to listen and talk. There is no need, absolutely no need to be looking for a solution. Why didn't anyone tell me this? This is huge. But if you're a girl and you're watching this thinking, of course, this is obvious. No, no, it's not obvious. Guys do not think like this. We want to be the man. We want to have all the solutions to all the problems that might not even exist yet because this is what guys pride themselves on finding solutions and achieving goals. But tell this to a girl and likely she'll be like, yeah, yeah, I get it and gloss over it, which is where girls go wrong. So here's the kicker. Often a girl will offer a guy advice with good intentions. Oh, why don't you try it like this instead? Oh, you should do it this way. But when a guy receives this unsolicited advice, they get annoyed. Why? Because as a guy, when a girl gives advice and tries to help, she is implying that she doesn't believe that the guy is capable or has the ability to do the thing himself. Call it pride call it ego, but something gets hurt. It's important for a guy to feel that the girl has faith in his skills and abilities. The girls need to reassure guys that she believes that they have the ability to do what it is that they need to do and not offer any help or advice unless they're asking for it. And as a side note, apparently this is why girls fantasize about romance because they are interested in feelings and people. While guys fantasize about powerful cars, faster computers, newer tech, because these are the things that help them express their power by creating results and helping them achieve their goals. Makes sense. But in any case, I'll be the first to admit, even after we know all this, we still tend to make these mistakes. So we need to constantly remind ourselves. Right, so back to Chuck and Blair. So they've had this conversation and feel like they don't understand each other very well and they get a bit stressed. How do they deal with this stress? I'm happy to report, just like before, guys and girls deal with their stresses and problems very differently. For the guy, when faced with problems, this is the time for them to go and figure things out themselves. And what better place to go than the man cave? And if you chuck your man mansion, they retreat to the cave, solve their problems, and then re-emerge. The problem comes when the girl does not realize this. And why is that? Because when girls are faced with problems, they want to talk about it, to deal with it. And again, just like before, they're not looking for solutions. They just want to talk because the act of talking about their problems help them feel a lot better. So this is why during times like this, Blair gathers up all her minions so she can rant about all her problems. But things get nasty when Chuck is trying to go into his cave to solve his problems, but Blair doesn't realize and tries to get him to talk it out. And this is exactly what he doesn't want to do. He needs to figure it out first himself and then talk about it. So Chuck is thinking, give me some space so I can think. While Blair is thinking, why does he not want to talk about his problems with me? Why is he ignoring me? Does he not care about me anymore? And drama ensues. So basically, if a guy has a problem he needs to resolve, a girl needs to let him go to his man cave, solve the problem, and then they can talk. And in great contrast, when Blair has a problem, she will want to talk about it. And in the words of the book, she will want to talk about past problems, future problems, potential problems, even problems that don't have solutions. Because the more she talks, the more she explores, the better she will feel. So when a girl is stressed and has problems, what a guy needs to do is to listen to her. And when she feels heard and understood, her stresses will naturally go away. And I find I actually do both. I have increasingly enjoyed talking about my problems because it helps me think it out, but only when I want to. Otherwise, I definitely appreciate the time in the man cave. Right, so once Chuck has emerged from his cave and Blair has finished ranting, Things are looking bright again. What can go wrong now? Don't worry, there's plenty of drama left. Even when there is nothing going wrong, somehow guys and girls have something inbuilt that is guaranteed to cause conflict, especially if we don't understand it. It turns out guys have a natural tendency to pull away every now and then to maintain their self-sufficiency and autonomy. Kind of like this rubber band. Now we'll bounce right back. Maybe not. This is not triggered by anything in particular. Maybe it's like a man period or something, but it just happens instinctively. Now, of course, it's all well and good until we're interacting with girls. And this happens because girls also pull away, but for completely different reasons. When they pull away, it might be due to trust issues or feeling hurt, which has nothing to do with what the guy is feeling when he pulls away, but she doesn't know this. So she thinks when he's pulling away, it's for the same reasons she pulls away. So difficult. So Chuck here feeling his natural man instincts to get some space to feel some autonomy and independence, while Blair thinks 
what the hell is going on? We were going so well, why is he pulling away? So naturally, through no fault of her own, she will try and get closer to Chuck. And this disrupts the natural cycle. All this does is make Chuck annoyed that Blair keeps encroaching on his space that he needs to feel some independence. So essentially what a girl needs to do when this is happening is give the guy space for them to pull away without trying to chase him or punish him. If she understood this and let him be, he'll come right back to where they left off. But again, this in itself turns out to be a problem. If a girl didn't understand this rubber band business that a guy needs to go through, when he's pulling away, she'll feel hurt. But when he comes back, she is not ready as quick as he is to go back right to where they left off. It takes her more time to adjust. To understand why this is, we have to talk about what girls go through. And unlike guys, they're not like rubber bands that will bounce right back. They go through things in a much slower cycle. Apparently, girls are like waves that rise and fall. And this also follows a natural cycle. After it rises, it will crash and fall. And once it reaches the bottom, it will start to rise once more. This bottom of the wave is apparently a time for emotional cleansing for the girl. So any problems and things that she has ignored or hasn't dealt with will come back at that point in time where she can then deal with it. How? You guessed it, by talking and being understood. So when a girl is on the upward wave, she naturally gives more love and care. And when she's on the downward wave, she needs to receive more love and care. After which she'll naturally rise up again. So if we are Chuck and we don't understand this, and Blair is on a downward wave, what is our natural reaction? It turns out when a girl is happy, a guy will take credit for this. But when a girl is upset, a guy will also feel responsible. Whether or not you think guys are thinking too highly of themselves, this is extremely frustrating because a guy doesn't know how they can make things better. So the key here is what a girl needs is to be provided a safe and supportive environment where she can let out all her emotions and feelings so that she can talk freely without judgment. And once everything is out, she can return to her normal self. This is something that I definitely still need to work on and probably something that Chuck and Blair also need to work on too. This and the next thing, which is about our different emotional needs. Yes, guys and men have emotional needs too. But again, as the theme of this book, these emotional needs are different. Most of the time, we give what we want to receive. And I say that if we're doing this, we're off to a good start already. But if we didn't know that we need different things, then we might feel that the other person doesn't get us. And here's why this is confusing. When Blair gets upset, Chuck might say, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Thinking that this helps by minimizing the importance of the problem or by ignoring it or possibly just ignoring the issue. And again, with good intention because he is thinking he's giving Blair the space to go into her cave. The only problem being, there is no woman cave. Have you ever heard of a woman cave? There is only a man cave. So Blair has no cave that she is going to nor does she want to go into a cave. All she wants is to be listened to and understood, just like we said earlier. Meanwhile, on the flip side, when Blair thinks she is trying to help Chuck out by expressing her concern and asking lots of caring questions, which sometimes is good, but often can make him feel very annoyed because all it does is make him feel controlled and want some space. And this is confusing to Blair because this is what she would want at a time like this. So more drama as no one seems to understand each other. So the book really summarizes this issue as 12 types of love everyone needs to receive. Six of these being the primary ones a girl needs to receive and the other six being the primary ones a guy needs to receive. So for the girl, they are caring, understanding, respect, devotion, validation, and reassurance. For the guy, they are trust, acceptance, appreciation, admiration, approval, and encouragement. You'll want to read the book for the full details because it goes into a lot of information about each of these that we just don't have time to cover. But know that these are the different emotional needs that need to be met. The key takeaway being, you need to give what the other person needs, which may very well be different to what you need. So if you're hanging out with Bay and not giving each other what you both need, then surprise, surprise, disagreements and arguments will arise. So how do we avoid these arguments when they do arise, you ask? Good question. Firstly, I personally believe that the point isn't to avoid arguments completely because it's inevitable that two people think differently, therefore will have different views on things. What is important and is key is that two people need to be able to consistently resolve their disagreements through mutual respect and understanding. Anyway, so back to the book, I think it rightly says, the problem isn't a difference in opinions, it's the way it's communicated. It's the tone of our voice. To resolve a disagreement, there needs to be understanding and an acceptance of our differences, which means we need to broaden our existing point of view at that particular point in time. And to be able to do this effectively, we need to feel appreciated and respected. Right, so now that we get that, here's the reasons why we argue in the first place. When a guy feels challenged, 
So if you are Chuck, he will instinctively focus on being right rather than being caring. Must be due to the caveman days. What this means is that he doesn't realize he is becoming less caring because it happens automatically. And so to a girl like Blair, this can come across as sounding like an attack on her. And Blair immediately feels resistant when she normally would not. And from here, it escalates. It turns out what is happening here is Chuck mistakenly thinks that Blair is resisting the content of his views. Whereas in actual fact, she is resisting the way in which it is delivered. And so the downward spiral continues. Chuck continues to try and explain the content of his reasoning without realizing it's actually the way that it's being delivered. Chuck defends his point of view while Blair defends the way it's being delivered to her. Ah, uh, but this is not a one-way street because the same thing happens the other way. Girls apparently, when challenged, start and escalate arguments by first sharing negative things about a guy's behavior and then by giving unsolicited advice. Sound familiar? This is hurtful to a guy. Yes, I can confirm guys have feelings. This happens because a girl's tone of voice automatically and increasingly becomes more mistrusting and rejecting. No prizes here for seeing how this can really escalate. So it turns out for both guys and girls, it's the way that something has been said that's been objected to rather than the content itself. Here's something to keep in mind from the book. It takes two to argue, but it only takes one to stop an argument. Apparently the real reason why a guy will argue is that he feels that his emotional needs are not being fulfilled. And this is exactly the same reason a girl will argue is that they also feel their emotional needs are not being fulfilled. But remember that these emotional needs are different. Often an argument will begin when someone gets triggered and this in itself is not bad, but the other person becomes upset at the first person and then they become more and more upset at each other until it becomes this big fight where the two people are no longer arguing about what it seems on the surface. So from Chuck's perspective, an argument begins when he invalidates Blair's feelings and doesn't hear her out. And from Blair's perspective, an argument begins when she is not direct enough. She makes statements and asks general questions that comes across as disapproving to Chuck and doesn't get to the point. So herein lies the answer to avoiding arguments. Guys need to try and listen without becoming defensive and girls need to express their feelings without criticizing. There are many detailed examples in the book, so make sure to check them out. Wouldn't it have been nice to know this 20 years ago? Anyway, so Chuck and Blair miraculously avoid a big fight and they go back to helping and supporting each other. But this is another minefield. This is very interesting to me and really addresses that question of why girls are always expecting guys to be able to read their minds. So we'll get to that in a second. But this all comes down to when we need help and support, the idea of ask and you shall receive. Except the problem here is that both guys and girls find it difficult to do so. The guy for obvious reasons because they want to be the capable man able to solve everything themselves. But the difficulty for a girl to ask for help is at another level, so let's talk about that. For girls, deeply ingrained within them, whether they know it or not, is they share this motto of love means never having to ask. Meaning not having to ask for help is a way that they show love for each other because girls among their female friends, they're always looking for ways to help and support each other, which means automatically they each receive the support that they need. So it's only natural for a girl to think the same thing about a guy and assume that if he really cares, then she would not have to ask. So what she actually wants is unsolicited advice, the thing that annoys guys so much. So you've probably connected the dots by now. For guys, in their world, if you don't ask for help, then you don't want it. When guys are hanging out with each other, one guy is not gonna piss another guy off by giving advice when they haven't asked for it. And naturally, he thinks the same about a girl. If she hasn't asked for it, she doesn't really want it. And so when guys are talking, they're not talking for the sake of talking, they're there to offer each other solutions. So there you go, guys cannot read minds. So if a girl wants help from a guy, she needs to ask for it. But paradoxically, the more a girl asks for help rather than expect it, the more a guy will be proactive in offering his help. Not quite reading their mind, but close enough. The big lesson here is that guys and girls are very different and we can't expect each other to act and think the same way. The sooner we change our expectations and start a mutual understanding, the easier and less prickly our interactions can be. If you've enjoyed my insights from books, you'll want to check out these ones too. Otherwise, hopefully this helps you rethink how you approach these interactions because it sure was an eye opener for me. Let's hope Chuck and Blair work things out. Take it easy, best of luck for your various relationships, and I'll see you in the next one.